Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Pinterest, Twitter, a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited to be here today to, um, <clears throat> to hang out with y'all for an hour, um, to talk about music education, talk about lesson plans. My plan for today um, is I'm going to talk a little bit about... Um, sub plans I've left, a couple little sub tips and tricks, things that you might think about, just, you know, not like a whole like, let's have a sub tub talk, but like just a couple things you might want to think about. Um, talk just a little bit about Thanksgiving books. So if you are planning on doing Thanksgiving, like maybe this is some, uh, maybe these are some resources you might like. And then I'm also going to um, talk about uh, order of improvisation or, or improvisation on um, pitch percussion instruments, the ORF instruments. I did some of this last week and I wanted to share how I'm doing it in my second grade this week and how you might um, try a few more things to get your kids improvising and playing around the instruments. So that's my plan. Um, if you have any questions about books, resources, things I'm talking about along the way, um, there's a whole page on my, my blog dedicated to all the links and stuff that I talk about in these videos. You can Wherever you're listening, watching, you can probably scroll to the bottom of the description and click a direct link. But if you want to go and do the, all the hard work, you can go to makemomentsmatter.org, click the video tab, find the Musical Mondays Recap 2021, 2022, and then go from there. But just there's a link probably in wherever you're watching or listening to this. Oh, and one more thing. If you're interested, um, I ha have a Facebook group. It's called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Um, would love if you would come and join us so that you could be a part of the community and we could talk and have uh, fun conversations about music ed. Uh, that's all on Facebook if you look for Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Okay, so I just had a really amazing weekend. Um, I was at the American Orf Schulberg Association National Conference in um, Charlotte, South Carolina. Um, it was a super, super great time. Um, I was able to share a couple sessions about ukulele. I was able to lead a jam session on, um, on Friday night. It was amazing and wonderful. Um, there's more amazing and wonderful coming up. If you're in Nebraska, I'm going to be at the Nebraska Music Educators Conference next week on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and then also I'm going to be presenting for Music Construct Ed, which um, is a, sort of an online platform. You can, there are a lot of different ways to learn. I'm going to be doing one of their smaller, I think it's called bite-sized PD sessions. It's just uh, 90 minutes. It's on December uh, something. <laughs> I got. I can't think past my concert next week. Anyway, um, it's coming up in uh, a few weeks, and if you go onto my blog, you can find um, the details about that. But I hope you would. I hope you'll think about joining me for Music Construct Ed. Um, it's gonna be so much fun. I'm gonna be talking about children's literature and and how you can use it and how you can um, adapt things. And um, I'm really excited about that. But that's coming up. Just thought I'd put that out there in case y'all are interested. Okay, so again, I'm gonna talk about Thanksgiving books. I'm gonna talk about some sub stuff, sub tub stuff you might think about, and then we'll get into improvisation. So first, um, let's talk about Thanksgiving-ish books. Um, I did a whole, well, not a whole video last year, but a longer video last year where I went through a lot of Thanksgiving books. So I'm not gonna go maybe as in depth tonight because I want, I don't want to double up on stuff I've already talked about, but these are the ones that are on my shelf that I use like every year, um, and I thought I would just throw them out there. I love the song Over the River and Through the Wood. Um, it's it's one of my favorites. I teach it in different grades. We do lots of fun stuff with it, but it's great to have a book visual with it. So two that I really like. Um, this one um, is Over the River and Through the Wood by Derek Anderson. This one is like from a turkey's perspective, sort of, um, and it... It sort of has, it's it's funny because it has like the words of the book, or sorry, the words of the song, and then also like a different story um, being told through the pictures. So um, they the turkeys are going over the river and through the wood, um, but as they do, uh, like a dog sees them, and then they get chased by the dog, uh, because like the farmer's looking for turkey, and it's this like long sort of silly story. Which, again, the words are right there. It stings the toes and bites the nose. Uh, oh, so ooh, I skipped too many pages. Stings the toes and bites the nose. So as o'er the ground we go. Well, guess what? This, like, nice, gentle, like, rollicking, like, we're going over the river and through the woods song is now accompanied with, like, poor, terrified turkeys trying to get away 
from a dog. Anyway, it's really fun. It's great for my younger grades. Um, and it's it's just fun to like add to any story if you're talking about turkeys or turkeys trying to get away or um, you know whatever you want. And then you can pair it with the song. So it's a really fun book um, to have. Like I said, for younger grades, I think it skews sort of younger. This version of Over the River and Through the Wood, this is by uh, Linda Ashman, illustrated by Kim Smith. I really like this one too. This one I talked about last year, I know, and it's it really sort of shows the story of one big family. And then so like the the parents here and then the, the families of their kids. Um, and so like they're all headed off to grandma and grandpa's house. Um, so there's this family in like the suburbs, they're gonna drive and then their car breaks down. So then they have to find another way to get there. Guess what, a sleigh shows up, whoa, how? Perfect is that. And then um, there's this family from in the city and they're gonna take the train um, and it's a whole mess. But then when they get there, they're supposed to rent a car from the train station and they can't. Um, and then, oh my gosh, there's a sleigh. Okay, and then this family, they're trying to fly. Um, and then they get there and then like the, the shuttle has a flat tire or something. Oh my gosh, but then a sleigh shows up. So it's, it's just this very cute story. Oh, someone's going by sea. I mean, like it's it's a it's a cute story. Um, love their different kinds of families represented in that. That's a really cute book. Um, I always share about this one, Simple Gifts. This is by uh, Chris Rashka. And it's just like beautiful uh, imagery to go along with um, the song. I usually like to use this song. Um, well, I know some people like, you know, tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free. They're like, how do you do that. Well, my chorus, my fourth grade chorus is singing a version of this song. I think it's called, uh, I think the arrangement's called The the Journey or The Open Road or something. I, I can nail that down and, and put that in the links page if you're interested in that choral version. Um, but like my chorus is singing that, so this is like fun to be able to show them. But also I like to just sing it to my younger grades. Um, and, and this is a fun visual to, to have with it um, because it's, it's a song that like they might hear out there and... Um, I've done a couple different things with it over the years, but right now at this point, I just sort of sing it and share the photos and things um, to, to at least get it in their ears, get it in their head. Um, but it's super cool book to go with it. And this is by uh, Chris Rashka. Let's see, okay, a couple more. Um, this one I got, but I haven't really used, but I uh, I just wanna show it in case you're, you know, a one somebody who likes one of those like books of variations. Uh, so this is the 12 days of Thanksgiving. So if you do like the 12 days of Christmas or whatever, and you want another version of that, 12 days of Thanksgiving, um, it has some really like beautiful, um, well done illustrations, which is nice. Um, and this is by uh, Jenna Lettice, L-E-T-T-I-C-E, -T -T -E, illustrated by Colleen Madden. Um, I think I got this, well, I don't even remember where I got this, but I got it, it was very, very inexpensive. It's, just, it's sort of a smaller book. It looks like one of those books you'd put in like a book um book room you know it looks like a like the whole group gets one but it's actually it was not very expensive um another one that's really pretty fun 10 fat turkeys by tony johnson and rich Dees. um this one it's like 10 turkeys start out on a fence and they all fall off or get thrown off or leap off or do you know something happens um it starts gobble gobble wibble wobble do a noodle dance 10 fat turkeys fooling on a fence Looky, says a silly turkey swinging from a vine. Gobble, gobble, wibble, wobble. Whoops, now there are nine. You know, so this is a, it's just a cute little book that goes in there. And that was by Tony Johnston and Rich Dees. And then my last one, um, this has been a favorite for many years. Twas the night before Thanksgiving. Story and pictures by Dave Pilkey. And you, you will recognize that name because he's written a lot of other books that are real famous. Um, but anyway, this is a, a really cute one, retelling the story of Twas the Night Before Christmas, only it's a bunch of kids at a school going to like a turkey farm, and then they find out what the turkey farm is for, and then they like sneak all the turkeys away um, and take them home. And they're like, again, for all these books, they're fun Thanksgiving books, um, and you can absolutely uh, take those books and add songs, you can add stories, you can add... Um, you know, like add a little poem. There are just so many fun things you can do with them if you have the book. And so a lot of times if I see a great book that I really like or I think is beautiful illustrations or whatever, I'll get the book and then I'll be like, I'm gonna add a B section or a poem or something. Um, but I know the book is quality, I'm gonna bring that in. So anyway, it's th these are some fun ones to have. Another one I wanted to share because I'm doing 
my fourth graders are doing their um it's like a veterans day patriotic program and our concert is this thursday um and i know a couple weeks months ago i shared a bunch of patriotic books and one of the books that i did not bring home that i usually share with kids is this one it's newer to me it's called my america the beautiful it's by um uh, well, inspired by the song by Catherine Lee Bates, and then illustrations are by Katie Melrose. Um, and this one, okay, I'll just say it's a board book. What's really cool is that, like, there's this thread, this, like, blue thread that connects all these different parts in the story. Um, and you can actually feel it. Like, it, it pops up and out of the book. Or, no, you can't. Well, you can maybe see that. Anyway, um, it pops up and out of the book, so you can feel it. It's fun um, to, like you know tactile experience but it's on every page too so this one starts and goes my my beautiful america stands strong and tall and free it's built on freedom sacrifice and rich diversity and though we don't agree on all let's stand with single heart we'll sing of all that knits us close it's more than what pulls us apart so like <laughs> very timely um like beautiful and spacious skies or amber waves of grain or purple mountain majesties above our fruited plain America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown our good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. So like this is just a really, really cool book. Uh, beautiful illustrations. It's really cool if you want to pair it with America the Beautiful. Um, and it goes through sort of um, through all different things. It does have a whole page just for veterans. Um, and so anyway, it's a, it's a super cool book. Um, again, not very expensive, honestly. This is My America the Beautiful. Um, another great resource to have. Okay. So those are a couple books that I wanted to share. Um, let's talk about sub stuff. Um, so, oh, sorry. And all those books are on, um, I have an Amazon like wish list page. Um, not that you have to buy any of these or all of these or whatever from Amazon. You don't. But one of the things I love about Amazon is that it's sort of like a Pinterest for stuff. And so, um, I can go on and make this like, um, I can, I can make like a wish list and then I can put all these things on there and then I can go back to it and find it again later. So if like a PTA member says like, hey, what's something we could get for the music room? Ooh, here are a couple books you could get. And and a lot of PTA moms or, or family members or whatever are like, oh, I love that I can go to Amazon because um, that's easy for them. Another thing is that like if you have it on Amazon, um, you can, it, like it lists the author and the ISBN and the publisher and all of that. That's all there on the listing. And even if the book goes out of print, Amazon keeps the listing. So like you can go in and find it and then be like, oh, well, I can't find this book f direct from Amazon or whatever. It's like out of stock, but I can still take the ISBN, the author's name, the pr print publisher, whatever, and go to my local library and look it up that way. So that's one of the cool things um, about the the Amazon wish list. So I have a whole page for just Thanksgiving books, a whole page for patriotic books, a whole page for, you know, all sorts of different stuff. So um, if you're interested, you can go check that out. That's on the links page. Um, Andrea says, is the America Beautiful book one that you can sing? I don't think so. Um, I just read through that, the first page for you. Let me read through another one. Well, I mean, you could sing that page. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown our good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. But then it goes, um, we share each step of pilgrim's feet whose stern and passion stress a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. Well, okay, you could sing it. We share, we share each step of pilgrim's feet whose stern and passion stress a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God meant our every flaw. Confirm our soul and self, control our liberty in law. The reason I initially was like, well, I don't know if you could sing it. It's not, it's not like, um, you know, there's sometimes there are books that are like the exact verbatim words just with pictures. It's not that. It modifies the words and changes some things a little bit, but you could sing it. Thanks for asking that, Andrea. Great question. But yeah, I don't know for in some reason for some reason in my head like this classifies as like a different sort of style of book because it's not the exact exact words, but yes, you could sing it. And now the next time we do it, we can do that. Ooh, good question. Okay, so um, this last weekend I was at National AOSA Conference in Charleston, South Carolina, and um, I was tick <laughs> I was talking with um, 
Well, like two or three people about writing subplans. Because last week when I was doing it, I was maybe a little stressed. And I was like reaching out to like two or three people like, hey, whatever. And someone said, why does it feel like every time you do subplans, that's like the first time you do subplans? Because like every time, every time it's like, ugh, this huge burden. I hate it. Um, and that's when I remembered. Um, so I have this binder um, and I've had it for a while. And I have kept all the sub plans I have like ever done. Uh, so like when I do, when I do sub plans, I like print it out, right? I like print it out, I leave it for the sub and sometimes they like check off what they did or cross through or sometimes write notes in. Um, and so what I do is I keep those and I put them all in a book and then if I need to, I can go back and like pull out, um, you know, the plans for whatever or pull out, you know, and, and like look back. And sometimes I'll look back and see like, that didn't work or sometimes I'll look because like I did something wrong I didn't leave enough sometimes I look through and I see like ooh that didn't work because the sub didn't know how to make it work okay so then I got to change details or whatever sometimes I find out it did work sort of or it did work really well or you know like I, f I get all these notes and I try and just keep that all in one place um so like for example well okay so a couple so a couple little details to this like let me see if i can show you some different versions so uh one time um the sub so i have this little um sub report thing and i'm just blocking out the subs name but it has a little box for each grade and they could say like uh they enjoyed watching and sing along with the dvd okay because i always like give like um a book option a singing option a dvd option i have lots of different options um one class was out of control the other class was great okay no details past that but I, I remember that class they probably were out of control um you know so like di different things it, sometimes uh they'll have details about certain kids sometimes you know it just depends on what the sub is like interested in in adding um yeah so it's that's interesting let me see if i can show you another thing where like the sub added in um stuff to the notes itself yeah so like this this is fine so like the sub like takes the notes and like writes in why things work or why they didn't work okay cool so anyway that's all really helpful when i'm writing sub plans again and sometimes i'll i'll go through and I'll be like oh yeah i gotta abandon that plan that did not work and sometimes i'm like oh this is a great thing i'm gonna pull this out sometimes even like two or three years later and now i've been teaching where i've taught in buildings where i teach for 25 minutes where i teach for 30 minutes where i teach for 45 minutes or 50 minute classes and so my sub plans have to change too because you know you have to either have enough content for a long period or for short period or whatever so Anyway, this book has been real cool to like flip through. Um, it doesn't help me write subplans any faster if I'm just like super, you know, going through like 10 years of stuff. So I like to sort of like tab the things that work well, keep those, and then uh, pull those and go forward. Anyway, this this is cool to have. It's nice to have. Uh, so if you, so I suggest keep if you write subplans and and you know people you get ideas thoughts back, keep those. It's cool to have a book like this. Um, okay, so some of the things I left in plans, um, a couple ones that I wanted to mention that I'm, I'm sure I mentioned before, but it'd be fun to mention again. Um, okay, so one of the things that I left a couple times, and I'd love to get people's thoughts on this, um, for younger grades especially, I like to leave some coloring. What do you leave? I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> because I, I never know, like, it, you know, with... The kids like coloring, right? Um, and that's great, but like, how do I like find stuff that fits in with each lesson? Well, sometimes for some of the lessons, like if I'm reading a book about Ella Fitzgerald, I've got a coloring page about that. Or if I'm reading a book about George Gershman, well, I got a, I got a coloring page for that. Sometimes I like to do just instruments. So there's a, a set I made a couple years ago. Um, so it says like Glockenspiel, and it says like, I'm special because I'm very small and played with mounts and have shiny metal bars. Okay, so like this is, um for kids i know i've shown these here before right these coming pages but what ha happened this last time was i went to go like copy them off and the copier accidental accidentally i hit the wrong setting anyway whatever it copied front to back and so my question is if you leave coloring for kids do you leave many multiple one-sided pages do you leave double-sided pages do you leave 
copies of all the same instrument? Do you leave many different instruments? I'm just interested because I usually will like take the set of like, well, like this one, huh? I think I went, okay, I might've gone a little overboard making it, but like, it's got like glockenspiels and xylophones and tubas and trumpets and all sorts of stuff, rain sticks and tambourines, right? It's got all sorts of different stuff. And I usually just run like one set single sided out for the sub. But now when I had this accident of actually printing front to back, I was like, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should try and print like a trumpet on one side and a xylophone on the other, you know, so you have multiple things. Um, and then I also wondered like, do I leave the whole class the same thing or do I leave like all different stuff? Like would that cause more of an issue for kids if they're like, well, I want the xylophone or I want the whatever, you know, like, what do you do? Do you, <laughs> if you had my situation, would you leave all trumpets? Would you leave trumpet with a drum on the back? Would you leave uh, just a random smattering of whatever? I'd love to get your thoughts and love to get your feedback. Uh, someone said, I, oh, Kelly said, I will leave a few that are similar for them to choose from. Okay, cool. I totally get that. And then it, I wouldn't feel bad like, then I could leave, if I had like four or five from this set for Miss you know, Smith's class. I, I have a Smith, so I'm not just like making that up. I could leave four or five of them. And then the next time they have a sub, I could leave a different group in there. So it's not like they're going to have the exact same instrument every time. I don't know. Uh, a couple people on Facebook said double-sided and blank paper to free draw your own. Okay. Uh, double-sided and then they can make class books for their reading boxes. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Uh, Someone said papers are premium, so I do double sided. Okay. Um, double sided, double sided, double sided. Okay, I've been doing this wrong for a long time because I've never done double sided before. Uh, oh my. Someone says I, maybe quartered pages front and back. Ooh, that, then I would have to use run through a paper cutter. But okay, yes. Or maybe you say quartered pages. And then you give them all to eight total. Oh, that's interesting. I guess they are pretty big. That on this version though, that would make the words really small. But I've never thought about doing eight to a page, or eight like four to a page on one side and four on the other. That is really really interesting. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna maybe change how I do this. Love that. Thank you all for your feedback. Please keep leaving feedback if you're like just getting to it. I'd love to hear what y'all do. Okay, another thing I left for subs, and this was another, like, I wanted, I, like I said, I try and leave for each class, I try and leave, like, a book option, um, a writing option, a coloring page, a DVD or video or whatever. Um, yeah, Andrea, those, the, the coloring pages are on my Teachers Pay Teachers. I linked them, not this week, but two weeks ago, I think. I can relink them on this week's notes, too, if you're interested. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so I, I like to leave lots of different kinds of sub stuff. One of the things I left this time, because my fourth graders and fifth graders are preparing for a concert, but I didn't feel comfortable leaving like, here are the verses and here's the music, press play and let, let them sing through it. Because I'm just imagining like that would be a disaster. I don't know. Because the like, few times where I don't stand up in front of kids to like, try and guide them through... It's just messy. So I just, I would rather have more focused practice. I don't know. So, and also like, why make them do this on like the day where I'm not here? I don't know. I just, I've never really done that. So instead, what I, what I wanted to do was, well, I like, I couldn't also say like, well, we've been working on blah, 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 because we've been only working on, on our concert stuff for a little while. So I was thinking like last year when we were all COVID times, um, my kids brought their iPads to class like literally every day and we would do all sorts of stuff on them. One of the things was interactive games. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to have them do one of my new ones and see how they do. So I got the interactive game. I printed off the, the QR code, right? And the little thing is a superfood challenge. I'm pretty sure I showed this a couple weeks ago. Um, but what I did was I went through and I recorded a really short video to show them how to do it. And now that we've been through COVID times, I know like a couple ways to do that. I could do a screen recording of my iPad. I could do a screen recording. Um, 
with like voiceover. I could do, I mean, there's so many different things you can do, right? I could have done the computer version. Um, what I ended up doing was I had two iPads and I, I videoed one because I could have done the screen recording, but I wanted kids to like see my hands touching the screen, if that makes sense, since this is an actual like a game where like they're touching and tapping, whatever. So that's what I did. <clears throat> Let me see if I can show y'all what the game was that I had them do. Um, I'll be able to do it on Facebook. Let's see. Okay, Instagram, I'm gonna try and do this. We'll see if this works. Okay, so here's the game. Ooh, that's gonna sort of work. All right, so here's the game. And uh, so it's the superfood challenge, right? And I showed this a couple weeks ago, I think, but I, for kids, I'd basically be like, okay, and you go through and you gotta, you know, here's the challenge, blah, blah, blah. You know sort of how this works. You've done the QR games before. So you're going to um, go through and on the first time you're gonna tap one item and you're gonna go through, it's gonna open up and oh, then you figure out which rhythm goes with each food. Click here to get started. And I basically would just go through and it's like pizza. Hmm, how sounds is that? Pizza. Okay, that's two sounds. Let me tap the one of the two, you know, the two sounds. I, I basically walked them through this exact thing, right? I showed them exactly how it works. Uh, I tried a couple. I, ooh, hello, grapes. I even made a mistake on one of them on purpose. Macaroni. Let's see. Ooh, it's not toddy toddy. Oh, no. Okay. So I did it so that, like, kids would see what was right and what was wrong. Ooh, sorry, Instagram. I don't know why I get, this got so bright. Anyway, um... So I did a couple different versions of things and then I would go back, I would look at, whoops. I looked at the two food items, went through and showed them and let them see in here, pear, pizza. Okay, that's ta, ta di, or is it ta di, ta. Mm. And I like, you know, went through and I, I, I basically did like a think aloud, which is like when you go through and you show kids exactly what you're thinking, why you're thinking that, how you're doing that. So I went through and I was like, hmm, Pear pizza, pear pizza, that's three sounds. Okay, wait, but is it two plus one or one plus two? You know, so I went through and did all of that. This video, the whole thing took maybe two minutes, right? And then I went through and I said, ooh, fruit, veggies, barbecue, or junk food, which one do I wanna do? I'll start with veggies. And then this is the, the game where you have um, four foods to deal with instead of just one or two. Carrot, corn, mushroom, corn. Okay, so you know, I go, I went through and I showed them all of the, all of the steps basically, so that if they wanted to try it, they could try it, and um, <clears throat> and they would know sort of how to do it. So I basically use like a think aloud, which is where you like go through the whole process with kids to show them your thought process and why you're doing certain things, and that's what I did with this. And I just recorded it. I left that for the sub. I think I actually left it as like a movie file on um, the sub. Um, flash drive because I always leave a flash drive full of like digital files in case the sub can't find stuff and then I also think I put it on YouTube just so I could like link it in case the sub liked that you know I don't know I, I trust many of the subs in my building but you never know what someone will or won't do so I like to leave multiple options if possible so now the cool thing is like if I make that recording now I can reuse that over and over as long as I don't say like okay Miss Johnson's fifth graders of 2021 you know if I if I'm just like, hey friends, here's how, you know, it, it gives them, it shows them like how to do it and go through. And then once they had done that game, I also left, you know, I printed off a bunch of my other QR games. So like if they got bored or if whatever, they could go through and they could try and see different games if they had extra time or whatever. Um, and so this is something that like, I know I can use again with different grades because they like playing these games. They like having uh, iPad time. In fact, I think the sub left a note that was like, they were dubious about it in the first five minutes, but they didn't want to stop when the time was over. <laughs> so like, cool. Anyway, so I knew I knew that it worked, but leaving these games and leaving the iPads was really helpful because like I knew that like they knew how to do this. We've done it in previous years. So, but I just went through and I made that video so that like they could see exactly and also then the sub could see how the game worked and then like with my example and then could go from there hopefully but this was also another thing where i was like oh okay well if um if there's no internet instead here's this other thing you can do because it's a web-based game so i needed i needed him to know how to make that work okay cool so we talked about some sub stuff, which was fun. Let's go on and talk about, um, 
let's talk about second grade. So I wanted to share about second grade um, and some improvisation stuff we did on instruments. Um, so this all started, and I have a couple other things that we have time, but this all started a couple weeks ago. Um, my fourth and fifth graders are preparing concerts now. My second graders have one in February. And I know that like, if I wait and start preparing them for that in January, I'm going to be really angry with myself <laughs> because uh, it's gonna be like so much to do all at once. So the concert for second grade is ocean themed. And so I was like, I'm gonna start doing some ocean themed songs and games now um, so that we don't have to stress about it later. Okay, so one of the songs I really like um, is this, there's a silly song I made up a couple years ago that I just like keep adding and changing stuff with. Um, it's called Fish, Fish, Little Fish. And when I teach kids, I know I've shared about this before, I start with an octopus puppet and little finger puppets and the octopus teaches them about going and fishing in the sea and he sings the song and goes, fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. <laughs> Right, and he eats the little fish. Oh, it's so, so funny and hilarious. Then I have um, a, a circle game version of that where they like, there's a shark who chomps a little fish and then we make a, a, a line and walk around the circle and it's super fun. I have a whole blog post about that. I know I've shared about that before in one of these videos. <laughs> so all of you who are like, we know this one, David, you don't have to talk about it again. Um, but if you're interested, I link that on the links page if you wanna go back and like see the processes for the other things. So I usually do that in like kindergarten or first grade, but now it's second grade and I know I have an ocean co program coming up. So I was like, why don't I take that song and add something to it and make it great for the orf instruments? So we, they, we learned the song, we did the game, we did all that, they're familiar with that. And I said, why don't we add a new part, a B section, a poem? So the original song goes, fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you, fish, fish, little fish get into my mouth <sighs> and then the b section the new poem goes swimming through the water swimming through the sea jellyfish come floating by very close to me ouch because and we talked about jellyfish and if you touch a jellyfish it'll sting and i talked about that a couple weeks ago there's another version i thought about doing a fickle bockle and um that talks about jellyfish. So I, I decided to modify and go from Bickle Bockle to Fish, Fish, Little Fish instead. So that I, we just add some like silly little actions for that, for that poem. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. Ouch! And so the jellyfish stings or whatever. And we could go, ouch, instead like an X, like, oh no, don't, don't sting me. Or like, Ouch. You know, we could do whatever you wanted for those silly little actions. But that's what I taught. I taught there's the A section where you sing and the B section where um, you got to do the actions. And then the first time um, we ever did this song, I took the kit, or we, we took our xylophones and metallophones and glockenspiels, um, and we um, took the song and worked on just a basic drone pattern. So on C and G, at first we just did a steady beat, and I hope this doesn't super, super mess up the sound to have an instrument here. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. <coughs> right, and then what we added at the end was <coughs> like, don't eat, you know, or we could, we could like <coughs> try and chomp or something. I always try and have something at the end where it's like not on the instruments because if you end on the instruments they're going to keep like doing whatever stuff and this is sort of a chase thing so i don't want them to it, it just gets real loud so instead get into my mouth and you could you know do a chomping thing or you could do like i like to do that too sometimes of like put your mouth back here so we see your face well i can't see their face they're wearing masks but right so anyway um, we just do that with a good steady beat. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. <laughs> and then there's the new part, there's the speaking part. So why don't we take our mouths and pretend like they're little fish and let them swim while we say the words. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. Ouch. Okay, maybe this could be like, 
the, the top of the jellyfish could be like the bell and this could be like the tentacle. I don't know, right? Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Jellyfish come floating by very close to me. Ouch. That'd be fun. Okay, so so we learned that that was like one day of, you know, we would just get this. Which is good practice. If we wanted, we could do um, like a Bordeaux pattern, which is like an ostinati. Uh, so like, instead of just a steady beat, you could do something like this. And you could sing with that. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. Right? And and that could be just your little... Let's turn this. That could be where you start. Right? And so that's day one. Um, sometimes I'll come back and then um, I'll use that. And then the next time they come back and we learn the song, um, we might do something like this. Because this song I made a little... Um, ooh, sorry. I made a little uh, digital file here. I'll turn this around so y'all can see. Um, but I made this little file and it's uh, Fish, Fish, Little Fish, a shark song. And uh, so it goes through, there's a version where um, you've got just the words. Um, you could do the thing where you have um, a little fish icon to represent each strong beat. Fish, or sorry, not each strong beat, but each beat. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you, if you wanted to go through and parse out the rhythms, you could figure out, and then this page has one fish for one beat and two fish for two, or sorry, beat. Oh my gosh, it's so late. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's been a long day already. Uh, so uh, fish has one sound, little has two. So fish, fish, little fish, and that can help you parse out sort of where the um, one beat versus two are. Then there's a verse with, with um, stick notation, you could take out the icons and just have just the stick notation. And then I have a whole set in here for like the melodic direction, like the up and down. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Right, so this is a way for them to go through. Uh, you can add in the solfege if you want. That's all in there too, where they can even just figure out what solfege is this. I am something above so, 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 something, something, so, me, what would that be? They could sort of figure that out. So there, there's this whole side to this song that you could go and do solfege, you could do the rhythms, you, I mean, there's, right, for me, what I did was um, I would use, I use the first part of this. I'm not getting into the melodic direction at this moment. I'm not putting on the staff at this exact moment, but you could if you want, that's there, right? And so I'm just here scrolling through so you can see some of these different images. Who's singing this song? Can you think of some actions for the song? What would it sound like if the songs, or if the fish sang back to the shark? You know, so it's just these little prompts and things that you could do on the end if you're interested. But usually for my kids, I'll just take this and draw out the, the uh, lyrics page here. Maybe I do the fish icons or whatever. And this could absolutely lead you to some improvisation if you want it later. Um, but I just want to make sure that I showed you all this now before I forgot about it, because I might have forgotten about it the last time I talked about this song. So I want to make sure it was something that, uh, ooh, ooh, sorry. Ooh, nope. I want to make sure it was something you could um, see now if you're interested. So we've got our song, Fish, Fish, Little Fish, I'm Going to Catch You. We've got our um, our poem, Swimming Through the Water, Swimming Through the Sea jellyfish come floating by very close to me ouch right so we got all those little pieces then um i also shared a couple weeks ago that my students were doing um the new version of bingo um so there was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name oh that's one that all kids know um, but there's also this other version that goes there was a big dog sat on a back porch and bingo was his name there was a big dog sat on a back porch and bingo was his name. B-I-N-G-O, 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 and bingo was his name. Okay, so we even in Fish, Fish, Fish Land, I taught them the, the new bingo song just to sort of like a welcome song or whatever song. And in that song, there's some actions. So the actions are... Um, 
Um, there was a big dog sat on a back porch and bingo was his name. You walked to the left in a big circle shape. You just walked to the left, left, da, 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 and bingo was his name. The next part goes, go to the right. There was a big dog sat on a back porch and bingo was his name. So left, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next part of the song goes, B-I-N-G-O, 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 and bingo was his name. And so that part goes in, two, three, and four, out, two, three, and four, in, two, three, and four, and out, and two, and three, four. So it's left for eight counts, right for eight counts, in, out, in, out, four counts each. That's the song. We learned it a couple weeks ago. I know I shared about this in the video a couple weeks ago. We learned it. We did the dance. It was great. This week in our lessons, when they came in, I we sing it like we've already known it. And then I say, if you could just change one thing in this song, we just change one little thing. What could you? What would you do? Like me? Like for example? Like maybe instead of going to the left and then the right, maybe maybe you switch that. Maybe you go to the right first and then to the left. Let's try that. So. Instead of going, there was a big dog sat on a back porch, to the left, we go to the right first, and then the left, then in, out, in, out. Right, and then I say, okay, great, let's go back to what we were doing. Left, and then right, and then in, out, in, out. What would you change, if, if, you, if you, someone else wanted to change something, what, what would you do? And I had some really cool answers from kids. I had them say, like, um, you walk left for eight beats, and then you jump for eight beats, and then in, out, in, out. Or one kid said, uh, you walk, you go in, out, in, out, and then left, and then right. Okay. And then we had another kid say, uh, they got into the jumping. They got excited about that. Move to the left for eight beats, move to the right for eight beats, and then jump in for eight beats, and then walk out for eight beats. Or sorry, jump in for four, out, walk out for four. Jump in for four, walk out for four. Then I had one kid who was like, instead of walking to the left, we're going to stand and we're going to do a fun dance action. Okay, cool. What are you going to do? And then he tried to do the Orange Julius, or sorry, uh, Orange Justice, whatever it is. I like to jokingly call it Orange Julius with students, but now I've like actually been thinking it's called Orange Julius. I know it's not. But um, he tried to do that. A second grader didn't work great. Anyway, this whole point of this lesson is like, I want them to think about what's one little variation. What's one thing based on the actions and the dance that you already know, what's one thing that you would change to make this song just a little bit different? Cool. So then we go back to our song. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth, right? So that's what we've been doing. And we've been doing, um, in that previous lesson, we just did a steady beat. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. And then we did a little action with our mouths. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Jellyfish come floating by very close to me. Ouch! I said, what if, you know how we like switch things up with bingo? What if we switched them with this? What if, in, instead of doing, um, <clears throat> instead of doing the dance like with our mallets on the poem, what if we um, did it on the singing part? Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. And we did like a, made our mouths like a, like a chomp, right? So what if the, what if the actions went there? Okay, let's do it. So we did that. We, we turned our mouths into the fish and then we did chomp with the mouths. Super fun. And they said, well, then I guess on the poem, we'll have to, we'll have to put the, we'll have to put the playing there. Okay. So that's when we set up our instruments in, um, do pentatonic on C. <clears throat> so we had left C, D, E, we took off the F bar, we left G, A, we took off the B, we left C, D, E, we took off the F. If your instrument keeps going, we would take off more. And so then we, I would say, okay, how about we do um, the playing part and the, the new part? Well, how do you do that? Hmm. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Now it's down, everyone. Let's see if we can pat those words. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Oh, that's pretty good. Jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. We patted it first, we did it twice, so they'd actually get it. And then I said, find your mouths. And um, since this song is about swimming through the sea, we should start on the letter C. Ah! 
okay, so we found the letter C. Anyway, so then we we would we would play that rhythm on the bar C. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. So at this point now, our A part, the singing part, we have now it's doing actions. And on the B part, we're pad we're playing the rhythm on just a C. All my kids are spread out, sopranos, xylophones, glockenspiels, metallophones, whatever. I'm at a bass xylophone, and so when they're singing, fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you, and they're doing their actions, I'm just playing the steady beat on C and G. I let them do that, and then, you know, then they come back and they do swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, and they play that rhythm on the C. We do that once through, they feel really accomplished. I say, what if? What if we change one thing? What if instead of playing on C, what if we played on E? And you could go to D, you could play um, D instead, but I, I wanted to switch to E because in this little grouping of like three, two, three, two, like we started with the biggest bar, which on the end of the instrument, easy for them to find, easy for them to play and not accidentally hit the D. So then we moved over to E. I moved them over to E because then there's an open space right next to it. And again, it's like on the edge of a grouping. So they're, it's easier for them to play that without accidentally hitting another bar. So this time we did, you know, our fish actions for the A section. And then for the B section, we did swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. Ouch! And as they're playing, I'm able to go along and say like, ooh, try not to just play with one hand, try and play with two. Okay, cool. Try to hit right in the middle of the bar. You know, I'm going around checking. And because they're doing something relatively simple, which like just playing on one bar, it's easy for me to find mistakes and correct them really quick. And they're getting confidence playing these rhythms, right? It's easy for them. Okay, and I say, what if we just change one thing? What if this time we played it on D? Okay, so then we did it. We you know, did the singing part. We played on the letter D. I said, okay, well, hold on. And then I pulled up a picture of the poem. I just wrote out the poem on a basically a slide. It's just text on the slide. And I had swimming through the water on one line, swimming through the sea on the next line. Jellyfish come floating by very close to me. I projected it up on my whiteboard. I said, what if I know what if the first line we played on C, the next line we played on D, the next line we played on E, and the last line, I don't, I don't know what we do because we're out of bars, but it would, so swimming through the water would be on C, swimming through the C would be on D, jellyfish come floating by would be on E, well, let me see what maybe we're, hold on, swimming through the water, swimming through the C, jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. Ooh, yeah, we could like mix it up on that last part. Ooh, that'll be fun. So the kids were like, dump, bump, 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 bump. We're gonna come down E, D, C on that one. So let's, let's try that. So we tried that all together. Super fun. They were able to do that pretty easily. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea. Jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. Ouch. Yeah. And then I said, what if we change one thing? What if we flip it? And so the first line would be E, the next line would be D, the next line would be C, and then we'll do that same ending. So the sec next time we did swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. Ooh, fun, good, ooh, awesome, love it, great, sounds wonderful. This time, what if we did just change one thing? And I erased the E and the C and whatever on the board, and I said, what if you just choose each line you get to give a different note. So if you want to do swimming through the water on D or on E or on C, I don't care, but you got to use all three by the time we're done. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. Ouch. If you want, if you want, it's up to you. You get to choose. So letting them then, they've done the process. They've played it all in one bar. They've played it on another. They've played it in an order. They've played it in a different order. Now they're choosing the order that they want. And then you could say like, what if we didn't have an order for the lines? What if you got to just choose, maybe we could like mix two on a line? What if you did like swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. What if we mix them all up and you could just choose and do whatever rhythms you want? Let's see what we can do. So we, but let's keep the ending. Very close to me as E, E, D, D, C. 
Anything else you want to do, you just do whatever you want on C or D or E. Great. Okay. So that, that seemed to work pretty well um, for the kids to be able to do that on the different bars. The next step would be add in G and A, probably. Through the water, swimming through the sea, jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. You know, you could do whatever you wanted there. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, jellyfish come floating by, very close to me, right? Whatever you want. But then this gives them a chance, like they sing for one part, they improvise for another part. They sing for one part, they improvise for another part. So like, if you didn't have, I haven't mostly enough instruments for every kid. If you didn't, on the singing part, rotate. So, um, the kid is swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, very and then hand off. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to nuke it. Fish, fish, little fish, ready, and here they go. You know, so you could switch off there if you wanted. You could ro you could rotate instruments if you wanted, whatever works the best for you. But that does give you a chance to sort of do that if you want. So if you have two kids paired on an instrument, they could switch mallets. If you have kids, you want to rotate them through different instruments, that's a great time for it. Okay, a couple questions. Uh, Lisa says, can you give us an idea of how many orphan students you have, how many kids play at a time, how many students get a turn? Sorry. Okay, so I sort of just did that. So I have all, mostly enough for every kid, but um, if you don't, you can do you can use that singing part as a rotation time, or you can stop the song, rotate. It depends on how you rotate, if you want to rotate, whatever. Um, because I know everybody's in a different situation with different instruments. This one is also one where like this instrument is big enough. I have two octaves on it that like if I had enough mallets, I could have one kid here going uh, swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, jellyfish come floating by very close to me. And someone could be up here going this. They might knock elbows or something. Right, but like you could potentially put them on um, this because for this specific activity, like this specific thing, they're only using five bars. So you could break it up if you want. It just depends on how you want to do that. This is a pretty introductory activity for kids, giving them just like a scaffold, just a little bit along the way of like, here's a thing you can do, here's a thing, gradually releasing the, the choices to them. And I, I feel like for me, it ties in with like the what we did for the bingo song. Like if you could change one thing, if you could change this one other little piece, if you could do one more something different, what would you do? Because I feel like kids, when you say like, here, take the mouse, do whatever you want, and they don't have any sort of framework for either the rhythmic element or for the form of the song or which bars to play, it becomes one of these. But if you give them like, here's the poem, we're gonna use the rhythm from the poem to guide our rhythms, and then we're only gonna use this one bar at first. Oh, now we're actually gonna use two. Oh, now we're gonna use three bars. Giving them just little bitty choices along the way once you know that they're competent at the other stuff um, makes for really cool improvisation, really cool um, sounds at the end. What could you do with that? Sometimes I'll have students share out. So some kids will wanna do like, listen to this. Swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, jellyfish come floating by, very close to me. Okay, obviously my second graders are not the ones doing that, right? But like older kids, it's the same sort of thing. Giving them a chance to share out if they want. And then you could do, um, the other kids could just do a steady beat while that kid does their improv. I mean, there are a lot of options for how you frame this if you want it. For my kids, I'm, again, I'm thinking about off in the future is a concert. And so I would love to have something that like a couple different classes could come in and play if we wanted, um, where we could have, anybody could do the improvisation, anybody could do the sing, we could have one group over on the side with like ribbon wands doing, uh, you know, a movement thing to the song. We could have another group improvising. We could maybe have some kids with non-pitch percussion. There's, a, there's just a lot you could add into this song if you want. You know, like it could be an A section of kids playing on the instruments and improvising. You could add a big B section where it's like the movement. You could add another part where something else happens. But I want to teach it now so that like when we're ready to put it all together for the concert, I'm not spending weeks with this lesson trying to like get the framework in their head. I just want to, I want to teach it now so I can pull it back out later and they can be successful with that later. At least that's the hope. Okay, with 
with second graders, it's worked pretty well. They've taken off all their own bars. They put back their own bars. Um, they've been able to handle the switches. What I do find is that when I'm asking them to play the the drone pattern, the just the simple open fifth, if I'm asking them to do that for my second graders right now at this point in their life, um, because they didn't do much singing last year and we didn't get a lot of chance to practice this, I found it's really hard for them to play and sing. And so I just, you know, I'll have half the class maybe play while the other half sings and, and then switch it. But I, I don't press them to do both parts now because I don't think they can get it now. If they're able to do it, cool. And, and I'll also say when I had them do a steady beat versus, um, so just the same, just the beat, 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 right? Just the same steady beat versus uh, like an ostinato, like a bourdon, like a bum, 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 bum. If they're just keeping a steady beat, they're able to sing a little bit easier than if they're um, asked to play like a, a repeating pattern. They're, they're more able to sing there too. It's been a very interesting year. Anyway, this is all stuff that I'm like, it gives them a chance to improvise. It's fun for them. They love being on the instruments, but it's also setting up what we're going to do later for the concert. So it's been a busy week. Anyway, I hope this gives you some fun ideas of things that you can do in your classroom. You don't have to keep this with just this song, right? You could take you could take a different song. You could add your own uh, poem for the B section. There's there's so much you could do, but that framework sort of gives you a way to like ease kids into that improvisation and, and show them some fun things they can do with that. Okay, it's week 12 of Musical Mondays. There are three left this semester, and um, I'm gonna be back next Monday uh, for another Musical Monday. But if you have questions, comments, thoughts along the way, please leave them in the in the comments. Um, shoot me an email. Um, go check out the links page if you have any questions about any of that. And remember, if you're in Nebraska, I might be able to see you next Wednesday, Thursday for Nebraska Music Educators. Um, it's going to be so much fun. I have uh, four sessions I'm going to be doing. Um, and then also in four weeks, four weeks, five weeks, maybe, I don't know, the first week or second week of December, I'm going to be presenting for Music Construct Ed. Um, there are details about that on my website where you can... Um, come and join in that a sort of like online webinar and that is all about children's literature anyway um, if you have questions comments thoughts uh, leave me a question and I will um, or send me an email I'd love to connect with you